welcome everyone. Um, this evening I was just going to talk a little bit about disability services. And disability services are housed within the Office of Student Academic Support Services. So we do a variety of things here in, in our office. And we're going to touch on all of those, but most of the time we're just going to focus on the disability services, just so you're aware of the services that we do provide. Okay. So in the office, there's two full-time staff. There's myself, which I don't know if I introduced myself or not. So I'm Tina Greathouse, and I'm the Director of Student Academic Support Services, and I've been at the university now for 16 years in the same office. So uh, also in the office is Katie Easterday. Katie Easterday has been with me since 2012. So we're both seasoned professionals in that office. And Katie's title is that she is the coordinator of testing and tutoring services. So we all, or both of us, work with students on all of the various services that we use, but our primary focus is I primarily do the disability, Katie primarily works with students on tutoring, testing, and other areas. Okay. So, our four main areas in student academic support services is tutoring, peer mentoring, academic coaching, and then disability services. So in terms of tutoring, we have a tutoring program. Generally, when there isn't a COVID situation, we have tutoring sessions that meet in person. You know, you will meet with somebody uh, here on campus, in a classroom, here in the JC, in the library. You can just meet with them one-on-one -on -one and get any sort of assistance that you want. We also generally have open labs for highly requested courses, such as math, Spanish, anatomy and physiology, chemistry one, those courses that we usually get a lot of students requesting a tutor for, we generally just have large open labs that students can just come in. This year we did have to do things a little bit different as we were doing everything different <laughs> with COVID and that we are doing online tutoring. So we're partnering with an online service called Tutor Matching Service. And as long as you are a student at Franciscan, you can work with any Franciscan University tutor for absolutely free, which is great. Uh, what's also nice about Tutor Matching Service is say it's Sunday evening and you have a test on Monday and there's a concept that you're really struggling with and you need some help. There may not be a Franciscan tutor available, but you can actually search through Tutor Matching Service and find a tutor anywhere in the United States. Um, and it lists their price. Now you would have to pay for that on your own, but you can even search by say, okay, I'm willing to pay a tutor 10 or $10 for an hour. There are tons of students listed. And so that's really a great resource. It, it expands what is available, especially for those late nights or in those emergency situations where maybe you need some help. So we're still working on getting that up and running, but it's gonna be, I think, really a great addition to our services, and I encourage you guys to take advantage of it. Um, in terms of what peer mentoring is, peer mentoring is working with a graduate student on anything that impedes academic success. So it's kind of a broad category who is the peer mentor this year, and his name is David, and he works with students one-on-one -on -one talking about time management skills, um, <clears throat> talking about if they had a difficult semester last term, what happened, what are some things that we can do to change that, uh, what is impeding your academic success so that we can address those key issues. So we have a peer mentor available in the office, again, all of our services are free, so if it's something that you guys feel like it would be advantageous for you to take advantage of, please stop by our office and we'll get you hooked up with those services. We also offer academic coaching, which is kind of similar to mentoring in some ways. Academic coaching, though, basically generally just focuses on key study skills, time management, note-taking styles, test preparation, test taking, ways of reducing your stress. And generally, students will meet with Katie for those for those subject areas. And then of course we offer the disability services, which is why we're here this evening to talk about. So part of our mission, I just wanted to include this in the presentation, is to provide equal access to university programs, services, activities, and facilities for students with disabilities. So we really try to collaborate with the student in order to identify what barriers are out there. There are barriers, there are physical barriers, there are classroom barriers, there are psychological barriers, there are 
barriers in terms of how our student body views other students with disabilities. So there are barriers that exist. So we do want to take the time to work with each student individually to try to figure out how we can best help them, okay? We also coordinate the provision of reasonable and appropriate accommodations, which we'll talk a little bit about later. Work with faculty and staff to enable equal access to an education and university life. One of the things that uh, we worked on in the past recent years is making sure that um, sidewalks have wheelchair accessible ramps. Some of them are done, not all of them are done. There's still areas that need improvement, but we at least have a game plan in place that we're addressing different barriers on campus. Um, we also provide training to faculty and staff on accessibility and legal mandates. So I've provided presentations to faculty and staff members in terms of how we can best assist students. Um, the areas of accommodations are basically every aspect of a student's life. We have academic, we have housing, and we have dietary. So um, just ensuring equal access in terms of the academic environment, a student might um, need interpreting services. If they're blind, they might want their textbooks or their tests provided in Braille, or perhaps they need audiobooks, or perhaps they need a scribe or some sort of assistive technology. We can make sure that they have that. Uh, in terms of the cafeteria, perhaps a student needs a specialized meal plan. So the cafeteria and our office work closely together to make sure that's an option. In terms of res life, we make sure that students have access or are placed in a dorm that has accessible restrooms, accessible dorm rooms, um, showers, that they're in a place that there's an elevator so that they can visit their friends on different floors. In terms of parking, if somebody needs accessible parking while they live here to access the different buildings on campus, we can make sure that we work with security to allow that to happen. This is always a cartoon that I, uh, that I put up that just is really very meaningful to me. So it says here, could you please shovel the ramp? And of course, the physical plant guy says, well, all of these kids are waiting to use the stairs. When I get through shoveling them, I will clear a ramp off for you. But if you shovel the ramp, we can all get in. So that's the way that we really view accessibility. It's not just for one particular person in one particular situation. It really improves the entire university as a whole because we want our students to have as much success here as possible. All right, so just the definition of a disability, it's legal terms, it's a physical or mental impairment that substantially impacts one or more major life activities. So, and these are the various areas that that covers, and of course there's many subcategories beneath each of those areas. So vision, hearing, chronic, chronic medical conditions, physical disabilities, autism spectrum, learning disabilities, ADHD, mental health disabilities. And again, there's, there's tons of subcategories in those as well. Some differences in K through 12, if anyone had accommodations in the K through 12 environment, they might look a little bit different. The focus in K through 12 is on success. They wanna make sure they get the student through and graduated no matter what, okay? And it's not that we don't want our students to be successful in college, but ours is about equal access at the post-secondary level. So there are a few differences. In college, the student has to identify themselves as having a need. Um, it's really student-driven in terms of requesting accommodations, where in K through 12, the teacher or another paraprofessional would reach out and work with the parents and the students. The, so the burden, I guess you can say, lies with the student in order to self-identify themselves, okay? Another big change that a lot of students aren't aware of is that in, in college, any disability diagnosis is completely confidential. Now obviously some disabilities are visual in terms of they can be readily seen, but the majority of disabilities are actually invisible, so learning disabilities, psychological disabilities, disabilities, hearing disabilities are often unseen. In college, no one knows what your diagnosis is except me, to be honest. Um, students submit documentation directly to me. If a student has an accommodation in the classroom, their professor is notified of that accommodation, but they're not provided any diagnostic information, which I think is really a great thing because I think a lot of times students are concerned or worried 
about having any sort of diagnosis come out and be shared with the university community, and that isn't what happens. It is all confidential. Okay, so applying for disability services, I just took some screenshots just so in case you know you had any questions on how to get there. I just typed in disability services in the search box on the Franciscan webpage. Um, that will bring up two options, Student Academic Support Services, which primarily talks about our other services, and then it brings the Disability Services page up. You can click on that. And then there are, um, it brings it right up to the Disability Service page. Now, so it's one page, but there's a variety of tabs there on the left-hand side, okay? Um, I'm actually, I just put the website in. too many buttons at one time. So I just want to show you, show you the different tabs here. Um, okay. So the first part is just the procedures. So there's multi steps here. But it, it really goes through one by one how a student goes about applying for services. Uh, there are, the second tab talks about general documentation guidelines, um, which that's kind of cutting off a little bit weird here. Uh, but it goes through specifically what is needed. In general, documentation needs to be from a treating medical provider, psychologist, or psychiatrist, are also acceptable depending upon the disability. It needs to be recent, ideally completed within the last three years. Um, if students submit a letter, it does have to be on letterhead. It always has to be signed by the practitioner. We also have general disability forms, which I always encourage students to use instead of having the medical provider complete or write a letter. <coughs> Excuse me. Oftentimes, if, if a medical practitioner will write a letter, they'll just include like one line that says, the student has been diagnosed with this and needs accommodations. That really doesn't tell me anything <laughs> whatsoever. Uh, so I always encourage students to have their provider complete these forms because it asks the specific questions that I need to have answers for in order to determine if a student qualifies for services. So there is a variety of forms here, you know, dietary, there's housing, um, there's if students are requesting a mask exemption, and there's, and then below there, there's, you know, a chronic medical condition, autism spectrum, all sorts of forms. In terms of additional information, this is sort of like a Q&A section, you know, commonly asked questions, so feel free to Look at that if you have any questions. Temporary accommodations are basically just what that is. If somebody would break their arm, break their leg, they need something temporary in nature for six weeks, we can work with them to provide that. Uh, confidentiality, the release of information, talks a little bit more in detail about how I shared that diagnostic information is never shared with anyone at the university outside of my office. And if a student would like to have their information sent, say after graduation, or if they transfer to another institution, we're happy to do that if a student signs a release for. And then we also, the very last section is the grievance procedures. So because we deal with federal mandates, we have to have a grievance procedure in terms of if a student feels as if their rights have been violated, there's a three-step process that students can go through to file a grievance. So procedures for requesting accommodations, again, is just, you know, gather appropriate documentation. I made, put some asterisks up there just to make it a point to pay close attention to documentation requirements. Documentation must be completed within the last three years. Learning disability, learning disabilities have to 
have the most recent psych educational or neuropsych evaluation. That's the only documentation that we accept. Um, IEPs and 504 plans are written strictly for the K through 12 environment, so they do not count as documentation at the post-secondary level. So we do require official documentation from the treating provider. Uh, the second step is to complete the application for disability services on my Franciscan. On the website, it actually has a hyperlink that takes you right there. So that's really a nice feature. So when you're logged in, it just auto-populates all of your information for me. Uh, you just attach your documentation. There's actually just attach buttons to the application, so you can just upload your information. I don't need the originals. Many students just take a picture. As long as I can see it, verify the signatures, and know the contact information so I can verify the documentation, we're all set. Uh, we will follow up. It says up to 10 business days. That's because in the summer, in case we're on vacation, it might take longer than a week for someone to get back to you. Generally, we reach out to students within a few days and send them a link to schedule an appointment. Okay? During that appointment, what we call an intake appointment, we talk with the student about their needs, their application, any barriers, and that's where we determine if they qualify for accommodations, what are those accommodations. And then any sort of accommodation letters, if they're academic, they're sent directly to the student's professors. If they're dietary or housing in nature, then we send them to Residence Life because they oversee those aspects of it, okay? All right, these are just some examples of common accommodations. This is by no means an exhaustive list, but these are just some sample accommodations that many students utilize here at Franciscan. All right, so I went through that rather quickly. <laughs> But I uh, just wanted to provide a really general overview. If anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer them you know, for you. Uh, because of the nature of disability services, I always like to answer questions confidentially. So if you do have any questions, please just speak with me privately and I'd be happy to answer them for you. Okay? Thank you guys. I could say, do you have any, like, if there's any general questions, not like diagnostic or pertaining specifically to a person, I'd be happy to answer. Happy to answer any that you have. Yes, dear. Can you um, sign notes? Can you be printed and faxed to the SFPD? The documentation? Yeah. Um, it actually just has to be attached to your online application. So you can just take a picture okay. of it. Uh, or if you can get them to send it to you electronically, you can just attach that electronic attachment. Yeah, we're trying to go to a completely paperless system, uh, which there's a transition time, so we're still accepting, but like, we don't even have a fax machine in the office anymore. You know, we just, we really try to get students to attach their documentation online. Any other questions? Well, if you have any, you know, please feel free to reach out. My email is just tgreathouse at franciscan.edu, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you guys have.